I want to delve into the sound design of this main melody. As I said at the beginning though, I believe that the sound used is actually a sample. Let's look at how we can actually recreate the sound using a synthesizer. So the synth I've used for this is Yuhi's Diva. This plugin is an amazing analog synth. It emulates a few different classic synthesizers. But the synth sound can be created in pretty much any synth. So first of all, let's talk about oscillator one up here. It's just set to a square wave because a square wave has a very similar tone to flutes. The main thing about this sound is that I'm using the filter to restrict some of those high frequencies. But if I turn the cutoff frequency all the way up, so have a listen to what happens when we bring it down. somewhere around this point here. If I turn the resonance off, you can hear it does lose a little bit of that bright feel. Adding that little bit of resonance just brings out the mid frequencies a little bit more. It makes it sound more natural overall and not as heavy. The filter itself has got keyboard tracking turned all the way up so that that tone is symmetrical across all of the notes. The other thing that I added as well is a little bit of pitch modulation using LFO 2. I'm doing a very, very small amount, as you can see at the top there, 0 0.1 on the mod depth. And that's just to give some element of movement, very, very subtle effect, but it takes away some of that static feel that you get with a lot of synthesizers. In terms of the envelope shape on our volume envelope, we've got a little bit of an attack there just to remove some of that pluckiness. I brought the sustain down to about halfway with a decent decay length and a little bit of release too. I did have an experiment around with other things inside the synth sound, but to be honest, this simple sound just works. In order to get a little bit more of that nostalgic feel, I grouped this instrument and I added in a noise layer. And this noise layer is just A little bit of white noise and I've filtered out some of the very, very high frequencies to emulate like a bad sample feel. But the envelope similar to the flute, it's just adding this noise layer on top as you can hear. In terms of processing, we've got a fab filter on here that's doing quite a lot of boosting in the high frequencies and the lows. This high shelf just boosting a lot of the very, very high frequencies and some of the mids to increase that noisy effect. And then this low band here. Just adding some of that weight into our flute sound. After this, got some reverb. A little bit of delay. Quite a subtle delay there though. I could have put these onto a send and return track, which is normally what you would do so that the reverb and delay are separate and also separate from any processing that you do on the channel. The reason I added these onto the actual instrument itself is to simulate that sample feel. The original sample might have had a lot of reverb and delay built into it and I wanted the side chain effect that I've applied with LFO tool here to affect the reverb and delay as well. So this is the LFO tool. And it just provides that bounce, helps with some mixing later on too. It's quite a short side chain curve. So when the kick drum comes back in, you can't really hear the dip in. It's not a very noticeable side chain effect. The bass sound is quite a simple operator patch, an FM synthesis patch. It doesn't need to be bright and in your face. It just needed to add some extra warmth in the low end. All I've done here is modulated A with B with a course value of one to one. Envelopes, full sustain, fast attack, medium-ish release.
And that oscillator B there, as you can hear, just provides some extra mid frequencies to our bass. And then the final thing is we turn the glide on here in the pitch envelope section and the time is set to 186, 180 milliseconds just so it bends between the two notes. The bass itself I've actually phase inverted because it fits a little bit better with the kick drum above in the drums track. And then we've just added the exact same LFO tool or it should be the exact same, but a very similar shape to our flutes. So finally, let's talk about the drums. The drums are pretty simple overall. From what I could tell, there are only really four or five drum sounds in the track because we've got a lot of complex rhythms and harmonies in our flute sample. And especially when the vocals eventually come in too, the drums really don't need to do a lot. They can be quite simple, sit in the background and just provide the overall rhythm for the track. This is what the drums sound like. The samples themselves sound a lot like 808 samples, to be honest. I actually ended up using one of my own sample pack kits, which is quite a soft sounding kick. We have a secondary kick, which just adds that very short percussive knock before the next kick drum here. Exact same kick as the 16 bit one here, but if we go into the controls, it's been pitched up by 12 semitones, so it's just a little bit lighter. We have a clap, which is very similar to an 808 clap, but it's just a clap sample from my sample vault as well. The clap has also been transposed down by three semitones. And then we've just got an 808 hi-hat here. You can see on most of these that I have changed the envelopes a little bit, just to make them a little bit shorter, a little bit snappier overall. In terms of the rhythm, we've got a pretty standard kick drum on every single beat. We've got an open hi-hat then on the off beat as well, with a clap landing on the second and the fourth beat. So it's really, really simple overall. But every now and again, there are a few, like the very quiet kick drum dropped in on the fourth, 16th note within the second beat. The same with this clap here that comes on the second, 16th note in the third beat. providing a skippy element to our drum patterns. And then there are some very subtle changes every four, eight and 16 bars. So at the end of this fourth bar here, you might notice how the second clap, instead of being on the fourth beat within that bar, has been shuffled along to the off beat just to provide a slight variation. So in terms of the processing on the drums, I've not done any processing on the individual elements of the drums. I've processed the drums quite rough and in a broad way. Just because the original track doesn't have a very clean, pristine feel. All I've applied to the drums here, I've added a cassette plugin by Waves Factory. And I've also made the plugin make the whole drum kit mono. I've added Saturn after this in quite a rough and ready way, splitting it into three bands. In the mid and the high bands, I've overdriven, I've saturated those two bands. The lower band doesn't have any distortion saturation on there. We might have a little bit just because of the volume, but it's mainly focused around these two. If we turn this off, It's just bringing out those higher frequencies. And then finally, this plugin here, which is actually a plugin I have been developing for quite a while now, a few years or so. It's not available to purchase anywhere, but eventually I'm going to look at releasing it. It's a soft clipper saturator plugin. It's doing some quite heavy saturation. If I turn the mix all the way up. So I brought the mix down to bring some of that original low frequency bass back through. Now there is a lot in terms of the structure, there's loads of other sections in the song and of course a big part of the melody and the reason why the song sounds good is the vocals but personally I've just really liked the instrumental, the background instrumental and that's why I wanted to break it down for you today. Again there are some small details that I probably missed and if you notice any just put them in the comments section below. The key thing about the song though is this nostalgic feel and the main focus is on that flute sample. That's the most complex thing in the track and the other elements around it are quite simple. 
I'm going to put the preset of the flute sample in the description below so you can download it in Diva. And I'm also going to put the MIDI clip in the description below too so you can have a look at the chords for yourself. Thanks for watching the video and if you like more of this or if you have a song that you want to have broken down, whether it's synth sounds, composition or mixing, then just put it in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe if you like this and if you want to learn how to create music like this, then go to our website modulateonline.com where you can look at our courses and you can start learning today. Thank you.